All right, let's open Photoshop and get started. I'm going to show you how to make a uh, MacGyver type map without any mapping software. And to do so, you are gonna open this map that I've already provided for you. Um, this map I got from uh, Fred GIS, and then uh, all I did was export it as a PDF, and then I moved the um, scale onto the image that I wanted instead of having it on the side. Um, but it's kind of an annoying thing and you don't have to deal with it, so I'm not gonna make you deal with it. Um, but the only thing in this layer here, layer two, is actually just the scale. So I'm just gonna put that this is the scale. And layer one is the layer that you're gonna play with a lot. Um, and then the other thing that we need to do is add a north arrow because by default this map doesn't come with one, even though this map does in fact face north. Again, I got it from Fred GIS. But just to be safe, uh, you know, you, you should always have a scale and a north arrow on a map. It's really important. So um, I found one online. It's fine. It's very simple. So I'm just dragging it in and then I'm going to resize it um, so that it's okay. So this is fine. Maybe a little bit big still. So we can make it a little bit smaller. Uh, so it's called north arrow already. Now you'll notice it doesn't look super great yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and show you how to make it look a little bit better. So uh, it looks not great because the background isn't transparent here, but you can fix that. And to fix that, you're gonna go to the eraser tool, right click until you get to magic eraser. And then you're gonna go to the magic eraser and click on the north arrow. Um, oh, it's gotta be rasterized first, okay. Uh, so. Uh, click on this, on this layer, and then you're going to drag the magic eraser and boom, uh, it's going to find the background and it's going to get rid of it. If you want, you can also get rid of this background on this side, but I think that actually makes it hard to read. So I'm just going to leave it there. Um, then once you've done that, you are ready to go and make your map look nice. So the way that we're going to do this is you're actually going to make your legend separately from uh, filling in the map itself. So for the map itself, what you're gonna do is you're gonna fill the footprints of buildings with various colors to express different qualities. So in order to help you do this, what we're gonna do is actually go into Excel. Um, and uh, in Excel, we're gonna make the legend. So we're gonna uh, open up Excel and then we're gonna make the legend in Excel. We're gonna make it look nice too. So we're gonna say, let's say we're gonna do condition, okay? So condition. So the different conditions are excellent, good, fair, and poor. Oops. All right. Uh, and then we're gonna um, take this whole thing and make a square out of it so I find it a lot easier to do this um, in Excel and to think of it as a, a square that you're filling, a label that you're filling, okay? So you can move things around, change the font, uh, change the, the font size, etc. here. Oops, Calibri, but let's make it a lot bigger. 18, sure, that's fine. And then um, you can, create these uh, different squares as uh, larger or smaller in order to um, make them, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? To make the, the, the uh, fill look nice, to make the, the square look nice and clear, okay? So building condition, sure, that looks nice. So then we're gonna choose our colors uh, and we're gonna do that online. Um, so we're gonna want a color gradient here. So we're gonna want it red to green, right? Because uh, it means that some colors are good and some colors are bad. Now, bear in mind, you don't always want that, right? In some cases, um, the, the data aren't um, qualities. They're not, um, they're not good to bad, they just are. So for instance, style, right? Uh, so in that case, you really don't want to use a red to green um, gradient because that implies that one style is good, i.e. green, and one style is bad, i.e. red. So make sure that you don't do that, all right? In our, in our case, um, though, it is good to bad, and we've got four points, four points. 
So this should come up pretty easily, hopefully. Red color gradients, red to green gradient. Uh, here we go. Um, so you can find these codes online very easily if you want them. So in our case, we're going to say that uh, pour is this color here. So we're going to click this square and we're going to say color fill. Um, we've got the RGB slider here. So this is the color. This is pour. Then uh, let's see, fair can be this guy. More colors, this guy, fair, oh, I think it should be, huh, see, th they made a mistake here, the code is actually wrong, so that's great, um, so then this also shows you how to fix it, well, one of these should actually be a zero and not an F, and then that should work, I think, more colors. that working? Nope. Not even a little bit. So yeah, there's one too many F's here, I think. Huh. All right, fine. Let's find another code online. Then. See, they're not, they're not all good, unfortunately. So sometimes you have to uh, find them yourself. This is very annoying. I'm going to have to start again, aren't I? I am. All right, you know what? We're going to do this the smart way. I'm just going to choose a color. Boom. And that'll be this color. Okay. Better. So then good will be the yellow. And then excellent will be that green. Boom. All right, so now we have our building condition with um, the scale. Now you can also, of course, put in borders to make this look nice. Um, so all of this is absolutely, uh, what's the word, controllable with all of this through Excel. Um, so the line color, you can make it black. That looks nice. Uh, and then you can do that for each one of them so that it's nice and legible, beautiful. And then you would just copy this whole thing. Notice I put the background in white first. This is really important because otherwise it's not gonna work right. And then you can just paste it, boom, and there it is. Uh, and you can move it wherever you want. Make sure it's big enough to be legible, but then we're good to go here. All right, so now the last thing that you need to do is actually fill the properties with the proper color. So to do that, you're going to use the paint bucket tool, which is this tool. Um, if you don't see it, by the way, if it's selected on the gradient, it's not going to come up. So then you want to right click until you find the paint bucket tool. OK, so you're going to double click on that paint bucket tool and then select a color. So you'll notice that the codes are here too: the RBG code, the CMYK code and the hex code is down here. So we're going to go back into Excel and find our code here. So we're gonna, uh, if you double click, nope, let's try the colors, more colors. Yep, so here's the hex code. It's probably easier if you copy your hex code onto something else so that you know what your hex code is for each of these, okay? So I've selected this hex code, okay? And then I'm gonna go back into this over here and put the hex code in here so now it is exactly matching then make sure you go back into layer one otherwise it's not going to work zoom in into the area you want to do and then figure out which buildings are in poor condition and then you just fill in the footprint it's that simple you just fill the footprint and then when you're done with those you would go into the uh, fair one so again go back into Excel figure out what the code is for this because I don't have it listed anywhere else because I was too lazy, my bad. So it's this one, copy it, go back 
in here, put it in here, hit OK. Um, by the way, you can create swatches in um, Photoshop if you hit swatches, and then you can save these so that you don't constantly have to go back and forth and find which one is which. Anyway, then you can go and put in the ones that are in, in fair condition, etc. Now this will require you to go into the database and figure out the addresses. So the problem with this method isn't that it's hard, it's that it's just super tedious because you have to do each one manually. But in the end, it's actually relatively straightforward and then you can change all of these things as necessary. Um, once you have a single um, legend designed and once you have your color scheme, it's easy to just copy and paste these, right? So that your legend is always exactly the same uh, and your colors are always consistent. Again, work with those hex codes. Do not try to eyeball the colors, otherwise they're gonna be wrong and they're not gonna match up. Uh, a few other things when you design these maps. Uh, you only need to fill in the footprints of the buildings. Do not fill in the footprints of the whole property. I want the footprints of the buildings. It makes the maps much easier to read. You can completely ignore the swimming pools and the sheds and outbuildings. You only need to fill in um, the footprint for the main building in each property. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, one more thing. The lines that you see, the green lines that you see on this map are the walking trails. And these might um, be relevant to you later on in the report, which is why I left them in. Um, I think that's it. So you'll want to save each of these. Make sure to save these maps as whatever, as building condition map, as um, uh, style map or whatever. The big challenge will be for you to figure out what should be in map form and what should be in chart form. Make sure not to be redundant. So don't have a map and a chart of the same thing. Probably that's not going to show a whole lot. So um, make sure to uh, pick one and um, stick with that for that particular item uh, so that it's clearer and that you don't have redundant information in your um, analysis. All right, that is it for this tutorial. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I will add one extra tutorial on how to do this same thing in, um, in Pixelmator in case anyone needs that, and I will post that separately. All right, thanks, y'all.